What's up, everyone? We are live at five. It's Tuesday. What's the date, Beth? It's April 7th. It doesn't feel like Tuesday, but it is April 7th. Thank you so much for knowing the day. Uh, I'm Paul Burke. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. You are green. It's good. It's good. Thank you. It was nice outside today. It felt springy. Yeah. Yeah, you're springy. That's what we yeah. call it. Um, hey, 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 who's here? Someone we really like is here. We miss Anthony. this guy. Yeah, we miss this guy. Anthony Boyle is here. Oh. And of course, we know him from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, awesome. but the world knows him for the plot against America. Yeah, that, that HBO show. And like, I remember I was saying, I was like, what is this show? And I started watching it, and I'm like, oh my God, Anthony Boyle's in here. And he's a Jewish kid in New Jersey. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So good. Uh, so we're excited he's here. Um, this this is like really taking advantage of the fact that we're on on this version that we can have people from anywhere in the world. That's right. So we're gonna talk to him. Actually, first before I'm gonna say, Lipstick OT the part was last night, and it was so good, you guys. I this cast. Did you guys enjoy? I was running the live stream, so I was very stressed. But why don't you two talk about it? Uh, because I want everyone to see it. Because it's only online until ten o'clock tonight. And I'm gonna watch it again. Yeah, so yeah. you need you need to you need to see it because it can't stay up forever. It's a full play, so they should all check it out, right? Are there I cried. for this because these actors were? I mean, they were just facing their computers like we are now, and like you guys are who are watching. Yeah. But they were just acting their hearts out, and Ari Grainer was so funny and costume changes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was so great to see people who have worked together before, like Jesse Tyler Ferguson and Celia Keenan Bolgers, back together again, but from afar, you know how it is. And Zachary Quinto. I mean, you know, it's very fancy. She was very fancy. Celia. Celia is yeah. Yeah, yeah, she has a lot of connections. And it was just so well done. Kudos to you and to the, the producing team and to Tom Curdy, who Terrence from the Oh. Trip Coleman, who directed it. Yeah. Coleman, who directed it. Nathan Lane and Christine Baranski. What? Yeah. The original stars of the show. Yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was so moving. And so I just, I'm quelling. I'm going to be Yiddish for you. I'm quelling. Wow. I'm so glad you guys liked it. Okay. Enough about that. Uh, but go watch it. But after this, go watch it after this. Just after. Talk after. about today's news. Today we found out the fate of yet another Broadway show that was supposed to open this season. You know, when you say fate, it sounds really serious. Um, but How I Learned to Drive, which we were really looking forward to, and it was going to play at Manhattan Theater Club's Samuel J. Friedman Theater on Broadway, is now postponed. So it was originally scheduled to begin previews March 27th and open on April 22nd. And it starred the original off-Broadway stars from 20 something years ago, Mary Louise Parker and David Morse. They're still, they still wanna do it, but they've decided that they're going to try and do this in next season, in the 2020-2021 MTC season. So that's good news, but they are officially not coming back this season. Okay, all right. This is, this is yeah. This is what's happening. It's fine. And what's happening at Williamstown? Yeah, this is really fun. It's a bit of bad news sprinkled with some good news. Best of both worlds. Yeah, okay, that is a good positive spin. I was the, the event I was most looking forward to this summer was seeing a streetcar named Desire with Audrey Bali. This is like dream yeah. casting. And the, so, so they announced um, um, Mandy Greenfield up at Williamstown Theater Council, AKA WTF, um, announced that the season is not happening um, up in the Berkshires, but they're doing an audible version of the season. This is really interesting. So basically, this is what it means, right? Every play they were going to do will now be, right. all seven productions, will now be available in audio form, including and Bobby Cannavale in A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, I would also <laughs> invite them to do it over and over again. Yeah, or they could come to a live stream, Broadway.com version too, I'm just saying. Um, and also there are other fantastic actors in these shows, Dylan Baker, Kate Burton, Anna Chomsky, uh, Carl Jude Gugino. Uh, Taylor Schilling and more. So anyway, check all that out. I think it's a it is a fun sort of solution.
for getting through this uh, annoying news. But I hope we get to see Audra and Bobby do this show on stage. That that's that is still my dream. But we'll, we'll see. Yeah, and we got an update about this year's Pulitzer Prize Awards. Okay, well, first of all, that picture is from Fairview, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama last year. They look, they look super excited about this news, but because I guess they get to hold their, they get to hold the title a little longer. Is that was that why? I guess a little bit longer. So it was originally scheduled to the Pulitzers were originally scheduled to. Um, be announced on April 20th, and now they're going to announce it, or at least the ones for journalism, books, drama, and music, on May 4th at three o'clock. So oh. there'll be a live stream, which there always is from the Pulitzers, actually. It's just postponed. Okay. It's just postponed, but not very long. And um, I guess they're gonna have some kind of celebration for the winners at a later time. But we're still gonna find out who won the Pulitzer Prize for drama. It'll just be in May. Okay, all right, it's still happening. Mm. Yeah, and the American Theater Wing has announced some awesome new initiatives. All right. Oh, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why aren't you talking? So here's the deal. Um, they've outlined the first phase of a national COVID-19 response effort, which includes funding initiatives that help support and sustain the theater community during this awful time. Um, the Wing also announced that the Obie Awards um, which was supposed to happen on May 18th, will be postponed and it will be reconceived as a virtual event. I, I still want to see one of these virtual award shows. I'm into it. I'm into it. I can picture like, it doesn't really fit for the OBs, but I can picture like all the nominees being in little boxes here and then one gets bigger. You know what I mean? Like on the Oscars, but we could do that on here. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't worry about me. Also, um, that, the picture, that picture was of Heather Hitchens, who's the head of the American Theater Wing. Yeah. In case you're wondering... Well, what that was um, all about. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, she's a very big deal in the theater community. Um, yeah. So I assumed you all knew. The first phase of the uh, response effort encompasses three separate initiatives, the Theater Artists Relief Fund, the National Rapid Relief Fund, and virtual masterclasses, and a $250,000 Theater Artists Relief Fund offers relief to New York's off and off off Broadway community of artists. So that's fantastic. Of course, the OB Awards honor the off and off off Broadway scene. Uh, the Wing will also feature a bunch of live masterclasses via Zoom and Facebook Live. So um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, everyone's everyone's coming up with new things, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes inspire uh, new ideas and, and um, generosity. You know, last night's event also raised a lot of money and it's just, it's, it's, it is wonderful to see how the community is coming together right now. It is a community of creative people and they are being very creative right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, Beth, thank you so much. Go study that map behind you. Okay. I love seeing that map every day. I'm like, God, I want that country. I didn't know. That's Italy, I think. Okay. Hey, Caitlin. Yeah. Today's. Gladly. Yes, guys, we have Anthony Boyle here with us as our next guest on Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. As you guys probably already know, Anthony earned a Tony nomination and won the Olivier Award for originating the role of Scorpius Malfoy in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And that actually marked his Broadway debut. And he has been very busy since then, doing a lot of TV and film work. And currently, he can be seen on the new HBO miniseries, The Plot Against America. I think there's like six episodes right now. Um, he says that it picks up. So make sure you guys tune in, follow him on social at Anthony Boyle. Leave all of your questions in the comments below for us to ask later. And please welcome Anthony and Paul. Hello, Anthony Boyle. How are you, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. You you look like you might be like in the um the Phantom of the Opera. I see like a candelabra. Behind yeah, this, this is my manor. This is my uh my stately home where I live. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so where are, where, where are hmm? you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm in Belfast, Ireland. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what? Why were you there? I was in New York, and then I went to London. I was just gonna. I didn't think this whole COVID nineteen thing was gonna be an issue, and then suddenly. Flights were stopping. London was starting to go into lockdown. So I came back to, to where I live with my family. And it's been fine. We've all went vegan, um, which is, I wasn't expecting it. But um, yeah, that's what we've done in quarantine. 
Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I I discovered you're, you're fantastic in this show, The Plot Against America. Um, oh, and, thank you. and I remember I saw it a couple weeks ago and I was like, when it first came out, and I was like, God, I wish we can get Anthony on Live at Five. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, we do a Live at Five from our homes now. So, so <laughs> you're our first international guest in this new I am. Show. What an honor. I mean, I'll, I'll drink a cup of tea to that. Cheers. You are, but we all kind of um, really <laughs> fell in love with you when you were on Broadway. You're such a charming guy. You were so fantastic in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. How long did you wind up doing it overall? I've done it for three years. Wow. 15 months in the West End and 15 months on Broadway, yeah. But I like, I, I had no idea. It was my first job out of school. So I was in my third year of drama school. And then they said, you know, it's the same here. And I was like, yeah, someone's going to pay me to act. Um, I'll do it. You know, um, three years I didn't expect was going to be the, the end outcome. But I was so glad I had some of the best moments in my life on that stage, man. Like, I, it was just the best cast. And I was blessed with like Noma and Sam Clement. And I just, like I, I miss it, man. I, I miss being on Broadway. You know, it's it's such a yeah. singular experience in my life. It's so so cool. See, do you do you feel like removed from it now? Do you feel like you've moved into like a different phase in your life after spending that much time? Does it feel, or do you still feel like? Yeah. Do you still wake up and wonder if you have to go by Scorpius? Well, it was like a wait. Well, no, I don't because I don't have the blonde wig anymore, so I don't have to. I don't have to worry about that. But I um I do sort of view my life as like pre and post potter because like uh, sure. before i was a drama student and then like uh, after it's like a whole life just changed it just felt like a, just a real a real different chapter you know it just it afforded me such a such a like head start you know it, I, I owe everything to it you know yeah um what was your favorite thing about playing that kid that kid was a lot scorpius i mean he he's and you were so that good it was a lot yeah um, and i remember when i first saw you do it in london I was like, "Who's this guy?" I mean, and he really has like such a such a great meaty part. What was it? What was the what was like your favorite thing about it? I actually, I remember reading it for the first time, and we had to read it with like there was an armed guards, but there may as well have been. We had like half an hour to read it before an audition, yeah. and it was just me and this other guy that was going up for it. And before you had to go to the bathroom or whatever, you had to be checked that you didn't have the script. And I'd only, I'm a very slow reader and I'd only read like the first two scenes and just assumed that it was going to be like a supporting role or whatever. And then came back from the bathroom and kept reading. And I was like, oh, he's in another scene. He's in another scene. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's in this a lot. Yeah. And then when I got that, that second play, he sort of holds the, the majority of it. And I remember just, I was like, I can't believe they're going to give this to me. You know, I couldn't believe it when I, when I got the phone call, you know. So let's talk about the plot against America. So this is a very mm -hmm. high-profile, acclaimed show, and it's by the creators of The Wire, which is like one of the, the biggest HBO shows of all time, mm -hmm. um, which I've never seen, shockingly. Yeah. Even though I, I, people are always amazed, and I guess that's what I should be doing. That's something I should. That's, you know. your, I'm, I'm, that's your homework. You have to watch I, The Wire. I, Next I, time I see you, will watch yeah. The Wire. I promise. Um, but let's talk about this show a little bit. It's 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 cool because it's one of these. Um, imagined alternate history shows, right? Uh, I yeah. never thought so much about Charles Lindbergh before. <laughs> yeah, he, was guy, he was a guy that flew across whatever he flew across, but he was also, mm -hmm. he very famously did gave like an anti-Semitic speech, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jump off of this. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about who you play, where it's set, and just sort of set people up a little bit for it. Well, it's set in Weequick, New Jersey, during the 40s. Um, uh, which was like a very Jewish neighborhood. And uh, I play a guy called Alvin Levin, which he's like a sort of um, like a wayward kid, sort of rebel without a cause, um, a good heart, a good moral compass, but um, seems to always find himself doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, the story picks up in the Levin family with Zoe Kazan, Morgan Spector, Delagy, Caleb. The, the kids are so brilliant. And by the way, I'm sure if you've seen those two episodes, they're, they're phenomenal. Yeah. But, um, and it's about this, the structure of this family and about the, um, a politician called Charles Lindbergh who ran, or didn't run, run against the election, but Roosevelt won the election, obviously. And um, <clears throat> this is an imagined history as if Lindbergh had ran and won. Right. And um, he was quite famously sort of flirting with anti-Semitism and, and fascism at the time. And it's sort of an allegory or a parable of how 
fascism can sort of creep up on a nation without it being immediately overtly racist or overtly, you know, completely nationalistic. It can sort of creep up. One of the one of the ways that I, I, I find the most fascinating about the book that is based on by Philip Roth is the use of language. How you know when he just talks about the Jewish people, he says the others. You know, we we can't be affected by those other people, which I think is in that speech you were referencing. Um, and you have it in today's administration when you have the president saying, you know, a whole demographic of people are rapists, or you know, it's 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 just how language can be so powerful and such a tool to sort of you know make us think and do different things. Yeah, yeah. And so, what was it like for you? What, what was your audition like for this? I mean, I know you've been sort of getting on. You got a lot of attention for Harry Potter, Tony nomination, <laughs> Olivier Award, and that you've been. You were going out for a lot of film and TV, and so yeah, yeah. what was it like getting cast in this? And what was and you're 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 playing a nice a Jewish kid in New Jersey, and that's not you. Yeah. So talk a little bit it's about not... how you got the role. Yeah, man. Well, um, uh, the ca a casting director called Alexa Fogel, who um was just an absolute dream. She she had seen the play, and somehow had seen Scorpius and Alvin, and thought that, you know, let's shave the blonde hair off, and you know. Give him a leather jacket but uh <laughs> yeah um she saw it and sort of got me into audition and i done a tape for it and then she brought me in to meet david simon and the director Minky spiral and the producers and stuff and i just i didn't want them to know i was irish so i just went in with this sort of wee quick accent and was just i don't know trying to talk about baseball or something that i know nothing about um <laughs> and just sort of just done that and i just watched a lot of his mini series and stuff and you know, to work on, on this, he's done The Wire, he's done all these amazing shows, and it was really, it was just a gift. Like, I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better role in a better TV show. And the, the plan of it was so good, because it was HBO, they give you every faculty and every sort of... Sorry, is, dog, is a dog or a cat? Henry just popped in, my co-star. Sorry. Is Henry a dog or a cat? You're a bit blurry. All right, I'll show you Henry. Since he, since he showed himself, this is Henry. Hello, Henry. <laughs> Hello, Judy. Anyway, <laughs> does Henry often make an appearance? Is uh, yeah, he's popped okay. in. You know, I mean, this is very different. Like, I'm actually waiting for the cable guy to show up. <laughs> and I'm Are you really? If he pulls up, you're gonna hear Henry bark. It's it could turn into a whole mess. But this is the new we world. We get the cable guy in as well. We we'll do a three way <laughs> sort of thing. Six feet away. Six feet away, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh. Um, yeah, so, uh, playing the role was dope. It was really, really cool, and I um, I just loved it. And it was such a good cast: it was Winona Ryder, John Turturro, Zoe Kazan, Morgan Spector, and um, you know, e even at the read through, I remember just sitting and looking at John Turturro do a scene with Winona Ryder, and it was just, it was like we'd done the read through a week after we'd closed on Broadway, and it was just a moment of Jesus Christ, I'm living in New York, and what the hell am I doing here, sort of thing. It's also beautiful, like the costumes and the cinematography and all the period elements. It just looks yeah, fantastic. yeah, yeah. HBO baby, they got money. You know, yeah. they, they put some, they put some dollar on screen. Yeah. So, how's your, um, how's your lockdown life? How's it going? Good man. Not, I haven't went crazy yet. As I said, my whole family are we're trying to do the whole vegan thing. So we've done like a vegan come dine with me. Do you guys have that show? Do we have a what? Do you have the show come dine with me? Come yeah. dine with me. So the yeah. show in it's on like British TV, where yeah. um, there's four contestants and each one cooks a main uh, starter and dessert, and then they mark them out of ten. So our family, we've been doing a boil vegan. Come dine with me. Um, I came dead last because I'm the worst cook <laughs> out of everyone. My brother won it. I'm not better about it, but you know we almost came to blows. But um, that's been good. We've been we've been trying to do wee things like that. I've been reading a lot, um, and I've been just looking at a lot of like Tiger King memes. You know, did you watch Tiger King? Of course, everyone. That's, yeah, we, talk about, we talk about Tiger King daily on this show. Really? Oh, good. It's 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 you know it's the best piece of art I've seen in years. It's unbelievable. Now, how does that feel to you, like as as Americans, when you see those people in Tiger King? That certain breed of Americans that are yeah. featured in Tiger King. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do, is, is there like a parallel to that uh, in, 
where you're from? Is there like, you know, there's different, I mean, it's a very interesting, specific group of people. I think that's a uniquely American thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, can't get over, I can't get over that um, the the thruple wedding scene. When unbelievable! He, I, I can't get over that. I just unbelievable. I saw a really good meme that said, um, "No one is born gay. Joe Exotic just chooses when you are, and then you marry him." Which I thought was <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I I love that. I I I actually I think it's the best documentary or film I've ever seen. I want so, to watch it again. As soon as we hang up, I'm, I'm watching it again. Well, I think they're supposed to add like a bonus episode. I heard. Like, I see. I think it was by the guy Jeff Lowe. Um, I think he's the guy who's producing that one. So I'm not. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna. If I'm you, gonna sit down. Think that she fed her husband to the tigers. Look, my this is recorded. I um I don't want, I don't want any trouble. I'm just gonna I'm gonna stand to that question. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna drink my tea. I'm not gonna answer. That. Do you? I. I, I oddly was kind of on her side while I was watching it. I don't know. Okay. Oh, Caitlin. Oh, wait, Caitlin is waving her arms. You too? You were a little bit on her side? Yeah. <laughs> of course. You were? Hey, of course I'm on Carol's side. Okay. I'm almost crazy men. We're making it seem like she's the most psychotic one. He was yeah. a terrible... Believe women. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That's all I'm going to say. I'm glad to learn that it's an international sensation. I, I wasn't really yeah. aware of that. Hey, Caitlin, now that you're here, yeah. <laughs> yes. talk about uh, some of the questions the fans are asking. Sure thing. So Jessica on Facebook wants to know, how long did it take for you to work on that Jersey accent? How do you know you perfected it? Um, well, I don't know yet. All the episodes haven't heard, so it might, there might be one where I slip into Belfast or something. But um, I think we had a good dialect coach Jerome Butler and he um he put me on to Air Koch, you know, that old mayor. Yeah. So I would just listen to him in my headphones because he was from the same area and I would just listen to him going to set all day. So I'd be walking around talking about fiscal stability and I'd be talking about all this <laughs> random stuff that he's just chatting and as well as doing the Alvin lines and just trying to get the cadence and the tone. Um because yeah, I just listen to him a lot and then just yeah, that was it, really. Uh, mm -hmm. Ed Koch, I would have never guessed that. That's so fascinating. Yeah. All right, so Becca on Facebook says that she loves the show so far, and she wants to know, did you do a lot of research before taking the role, and are you a fan of the 1940s era? Um, am I a fan of the 1940s era? And I, that's a very broad, a very broad thing. I suppose so, yeah. Um, I don't really watch many period dramas, and I try to, to look at it as if I was going into just playing a human being as opposed to someone in the forties. Cause I think sometimes when we put labels on things, if you're, if you're going to prep a character and you say, this is someone who lives in a certain time, you might start to move and speak a different way, but I just try to focus on uh, him being a human being and, and his relationship with, with each of the characters. But the production of the show, like you said, is, is incredible. You know, when you watch it back, it's, it's, it's really sublime. Yeah, you look you look great in the period too. I mean, it, it suits you well. It's good. It's a good look for you. Thank you very much. I'll take that. I'll try and get more nineteen forties roles. That's it. That's the only one you're going to do from now on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people always like this question. Stella mm -hmm. on YouTube wants to know what's the biggest difference from live theater acting versus television acting, besides like the obvious live and. Filmed, but and I'm going to add, did it did it come naturally to you? Was it or was it sort of a learning curve? I think theater is like the only time in my life where I go into a room and and complete darkness, and we all sort of share an experience. I, I don't go to church. I don't do anything like that. It's it's the time where I go in and sort of really just receive a story or be a part of that. Um, I love it. I I honestly think it's. It's just completely changed my life theater. Um, and I prefer it to, um, to to acting on screen or film. As of now, I find that um, I find theater a bit easier. It just feels just free. And you're the director and editor when you're performing, whereas film, I don't know if film feels like right now anyway, maybe I'm not good at it yet, but right now it feels like a very private thing. Um, and theater feels like a very thing um, a moment of sharing 
and we're all sort of you're trying to communicate to the to the other actor and the the audience whereas in film it feels a bit like i don't know trying to keep a secret or trying to keep something bottled that might sound like the ramblings of a madman but in my head it made a bit of sense i don't know if that makes sense do you have any i'm gonna ask a question do you have any stage dream roles yeah man i've been i've been reading a lot of shakespeare at the moment and a lot of Chekhov, and i'd like to do richard the second um and hamlet obviously and i'd love to do a stephen adley gurgis play I, I really like that american writer um i just don't know if the if I, I don't know but I, i'd like to do one of those plays i think i think he's he's such a sick writer man so though hey, if you could do new york accent you could do a stephen adley gurgis play so that's a good up, man. Put him on the phone. Let's do it. <laughs> well that that kind of goes right into this question. Paul Smith on YouTube says, What would it take to get you back on Broadway? It Let you book. Let's do it, man. You pay up, Paul Smith. Oh. Uh, no. uh I, well, I if someone cast me in a play, someone give me a play, I'll be over there in a second, man. Uh okay. I I love it. I honestly would love to go back. I love the culture around that I love the everyone hangs out together and I, I love that the fans are just so engaged, you know what I mean? It's like I I was just it's so different to the West End. It's such a, it's like being at a sporting event, you know, the, like Broadway really is, I think the lifeblood of New York. If it, it just feels like such a, I don't know, it feels like you're part of something special. Like when you go to see the shows or when you're performing in one, I'd love to, I'd love to be back. Take me back. I beg you Broadway.com, get me back in. You, you were really like, and you were really, I saw you at parties and openings all the time. You were a real part of the theater community. You really seem to love your time here. So. Oh, I loved it, man. Oh, absolutely. It was so much crack. It was just so fun. I loved it. Yeah. I love it. All right. Can we, I think we have time for one more question oh. and we have a lot of these and people just want to know, do you ever get tired of being stopped or being asked about cursed child? Is there ever a moment where you're like, nah, I'm good. Or do you still no way, take it I, all I, in? Like, it's, it's like, if people like it, you know what I mean? That's, that's what you do for a living. Like that's so cool. If, if people have responded to it and, and felt that I still get messages from people saying some like really heartfelt stuff about like, how a certain relationship in it or it came at a certain point in their life that really helped them find themselves or get through the loss of someone and to hear stuff like that you know at, at the end of the day you're just an actor you're not doing something life-saving you know what i mean like people in the nhs are doing nurses doctors you're just in that case putting on a wig and doing a funny voice and saying lines and if people feel that strongly about it and have it helps them in their everyday life then what an honor to be you know, involved in something like that. So, no, curse child away. Do, you, uh, do blondes have more fun? Do you miss being a blonde? Blondes <laughs> have more fun. Um, my voice feels a lot better for it, to be honest, not playing that role. Um, and I don't, I had like so much, I used to carry myself so, like Richard yeah. III or something, I had so much trauma here. So I'm finally just starting to get leveled out again. Um, but I don't miss the physical aspect of it um, or the emotional aspects. I was just, I had to cry a lot in the show. So, I'd be walking down, you know, 47th and, and 8th, and I'd just start crying, which isn't a good look. But um, I do miss it. I do. I really do miss it. And I'd love to come back. So you're not going to bleach your hair anytime soon, though? No, but someone asked me to do it. One of my mates sort of dared me in the group chat, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Anthony. And, you know, as your star keeps rising, don't forget us, you know. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Very kind thing to say. Don't thank you for having me and uh, stay safe and uh, say hi to your family and good luck with those cook offs or whatever, whatever's happening. <laughs> yeah. it was fun. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. See you guys. All right. Okay. That was awesome. I love that guy. Hey, uh, Caitlin, why yeah. don't you pick us up? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today as we continue our Live at Five Home Edition right here live on Facebook and YouTube. You can follow us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to stage favorite Debbie Gibson.